Everyone sees the value in this drug. Otherwise, they would create a new drug, modify this drug, or just stop fucking bringing it to market like some of the other steroids. What is up, everyone? It's Roos. I hope everyone is doing well. ASMR sip is 1907. Check out 1907.com. ASMR Spritz is Intelligent Elephant Carbon. If you want this cologne, check the full source list in the description. Back with a PD quick view, quicker review. Still no title. Come up with a title down below that's catchy and got a bling to it. We're gonna do a bunch of these, right? The source is the Anabolics 11th edition for the history and a bit of the medical data, but this is Anavar, which is Oxandrolone, and I'm more gonna be going into what I've learned over the years about Anavar, but I'm going to start again with the medical reference written by doctors. So Oxandrolone is an oral anabolic steroid derived from DHT. It was designed to have very strong separation from anabolic and androgenic effects. Androgenic means hypermasculinization. If you are a female, we don't want hypermasculinization, but we still want a high anabolic reading. So Anavar is very anabolic, not very androgenic. And as far as the actual ratio, they're saying it's 322 to 630 anabolic with only 24 androgenic. And remember, testosterone is 100-100 ratio. So you're getting way more anabolic, less androgenic side effects. This is exactly the number one oral of choice when it comes to what is utilized with the least amount of risk. Anavar is always the tried, true, staple, legitimate, real Anavar can absolutely really not impact biomarkers other than taking out your cholesterol, which any synthetic androgen is going to fuck up your cholesterol. But overall, the side effect profile of Anavar makes it one of the best drugs still to this day as far as adding a oral agent that's not estrogenic, that's not going to have gyno issues, progesterone issues, anything of that nature. Despite a 17 alkylation methylation, aka on paper it's liver toxic, it seems like compared to the other 17 A's, such as Dianabol, right? Anavar is much less toxic and overall can be sustained for long periods of time on top of a testosterone base or even by itself. Oxandrolone was first described in 1962, was developed into a medicine several years later by Pfizer, but Pfizer was originally called GDCRO and company, which sold it in the United States and Netherlands under the Anavar trade name. Then it was fought over by all these big pharma companies, ultimately being sold in 1995, renamed Oxindrin, named by Biotechnology General Corporation. BTG would continue continue selling it for the FDA approved uses involving lean mass preservation, but has also been granted orphan drug status for the treatment of AIDS wasting, alcohol hepatitis, tumor syndromes in girls, and constitutional delay of growth and puberty in boys, aka if your pituitary is fucked up and you're not doing the boy from man switch, again, Anavar is on the list to get legally prescribed to you to help you get out of that. And then it was switched again to Gemini Laboratories. So this drug has been around forever. It's been traded off hands by the big FDA companies, meaning everyone sees the value in this drug. Otherwise, they would create a new drug, modify this drug, or just stop fucking bringing it to market like some of the other steroids that we'll mention on this channel. As far as the side effects, there's not much estrogen related issues. Anavar does not aromatize to estrogen. So if you are gyno prone, everyone's technically you know, a little bit gyno prone. This is not going to be an issue and there's no prolactin bullshit. So, you know, with like Tren or Deca, you got prolactin issues such as weird erectile dysfunction. None of that. As far as androgenic side effects go, it's very well tolerated and that's why you know, females, especially competitors, anyone who's looking to compete in the MPC as a bikini athlete, 
Again, I'm not encouraging no one to do nothing, but Anivar is one of the most widely used drugs in the female divisions, because again, it's very anabolic, not androgenic. It's very dry, puts on tissue without water and fat. It doesn't seem to cause viralization in females below 7.5 milligrams a day. Do I know girls who compete who take over 15? I do. Do some of their voices start cracking? I've seen it happen. Do not think that you can just, oh, because the androgenic level is so low, I'm a girl, I can just fucking take 20 to 30 a day like a dude. Could have all the androgenic side effects at that dosage. That shit is dosage dependent. So again, with Anivar, with any of these drugs with females, I always get asked by females, oh, what PED can I do? Like this is one that again is proposed on paper. However, I've seen viralization. I've seen voice cracking come from Anivar. And the main thing I wanted to harp on again with the females watching is roid test every single batch of Anivar you get because Anivar, super expensive raw. This is a raw that costs a lot of money. Underground Lab is like, fuck. You know, Andrew, Winstraw's pretty close to Anivar and Winstraw's like a quarter of the price of a raw. Just make some Winstraw tabs and sell it as Anivar. Girl takes that, boom. Fucking hair falls out, viralization. So make sure if you are a female, you get roid test kits, every single tablets, <clears throat> every single batch of tablets you get, you obviously roid test it to make sure you're taking legit VAR. I cannot harp that enough. It's devastating when, you know, a female competitor comes in my DM box at Russo Lifts and she's saying, oh, I thought Anivar was safe. Like my voice is now permanently messed up. And it's like, I guarantee she she got Winstrol, right? And that just sucks. I already touched on the hepatoxicity. It's not very suppressive as far as testosterone, meaning it behaves in the manner of suppressing the HBTA, not flatlining it, shutting it off completely like other drugs. So this makes post-cycle therapy easier to bounce back your natural endogenous levels. And thus you're dipping your feet in the water versus you doing something like DECA or MENT where you're flatlining your shit off for a long period of time anivar is very well tolerated in hpta rebound so keep that into consideration that anivar is the goat for a reason as far as dosages i'll tell you what the medical book says the original prescribing guidelines for anivar called for a daily dosage between 2.5 milligrams and 20 milligrams per day and 15 to 25 milligrams per day is performance enhancing i've heard Again, dudes go up to 50 a day. So just keep that in mind. As far as administration for women, five to 10, personally for me, 7.5. That's my two cents on that shit. It's legally prescribed over the counter by all the HRT clinics you guys see online, including mine. So you can obviously fill out a contact request if you need HRT, actually need it they give it to you. You could potentially inquire for Anivar down the road if you are very open with your blood work and your bloods aren't looking like shit and you're not abusing shit behind the scenes with the testosterone, aka you're listening to them, right? Then the market opens for legal access to Anivar, but tons of HRT clinics will give it out like candy. You know, when people will tell me, oh, what's like one of the least riskiest compounds, Anivar comes to the table as the goat. If you get really good, strong Anivar, gives you a crazy, nice, dense, hard look. Doesn't really jack up your blood pressure, doesn't cause water retention, no estrogen activity, no progesterone activity. It's not super androgenic. Hair loss, obviously it's DHT derived. So it's definitely on the table, but there are compounds that cause far worse hair loss. It's not super suppressive, obviously dosage dependent. If you're gonna do 50 milligrams a day, expect to be shut down, but 10 to 20, again, suppressive, not shut down and makes it an easy PCT. You also need to take into consideration that Anivar is one of those compounds that is heavily faked. So you need to roid test it all the time. It's expensive raw. 
definitely make sure your var is legit before you start a prep and or you have a female client etc etc you don't want to be giving that female client windshield because that's normally what it's faked with i have very minimal experience with anivar i personally enjoyed it it remind me of a better version of austrian mk2866 so that's kind of the look it gave me very flattish i'd say i was decently full and overall just clean solid lean tissue gain no water no blow no face changes like you guys have made fun of my face this past couple months none of that and wasn't that toxic in my opinion i didn't really have fucked up alt ast after the anivar abuse and i modulated around up to 30 a day personally found it again very mild very tolerable i understood why everyone raves about it and i understand why the medical community the professional medical community still uses it to this day it's tried and true and on paper it's like that compound that everyone is looking for not the most extreme most powerful compound but not everyone watching this video is trying to again juice to the moon so hopefully you guys found this informative if you give this a thumbs up it helps rank the video i will see you guys in my next video